biblical Christianity firmly teaches that God created all things. Because of this, Christians must reject all naturalistic and evolutionary theories of origins. The biblical Christian uh, position on origins is in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and in the beginning God created male and female. Modern science's roots are grounded in a Christian view of the world. This is because science is based on the assumption that the universe is orderly and understandable. Renowned philosopher and historian of science Stanley L. Jackie said that from Copernicus to Newton, it was not deism, but Christian theism that served as a principal factor, helping the scientific enterprise reach self-sustaining maturity. Christianity provided many of the basic intellectual presuppositions that made science possible in the first place. And this isn't just Christians who say this, who are trying to defend themselves. Many uh, secular historians today, in fact, it's commonplace now among professional historians that it was, in fact, Christianity that gave the unique uh, intellectual ideas that allowed science to flourish. Perhaps no other aspect of Christianity has come under greater attack in recent years than its view of origins. Wherever you turn, uh, in the school systems, on television, on our uh, discovery and learning channels, even on our history channels, uh, there's just a great uh, um, amount of evolution being presented as, as scientific fact. Evolution today is more than science, I can tell you that. In fact, evolution is not even a science, it's a philosophy of science. Evolutionary theory faces problems in every area. It's pretty well known that it doesn't fit the fossil record. This, the fossil record does not show this pattern of slow, gradual, step-by-step -step change from one kind of thing into another. It shows variation within the type. Uh, evolutionary naturalism, the Darwinian kind of evolution, doesn't fit the genetic evidence. When you try to test it, you find you can't make the big changes. It, you, you just produce birth defects uh, when you induce mutations in uh, uh, organisms. Um, it doesn't face the molecular evidence. Uh, Michael Behe has shown how molecular structures are irreducibly complex. You can't build them up by a blind, step-by-step -step, uh, process. So um, if you go from one area to another, you see it's nothing but problems and evasions, you see, to try to answer the problems. And you go to a scientist in one specialty and he'll say, I know it's all problems here, but after all, they've got it proved in all the other areas. See, so you go to the other areas and you find that it's just as bad or worse. But the worst problem is none of these things that I've mentioned. The worst problem is that living organisms are full of complex operating systems that need a program to direct their operations. Everybody knows there has to be something instructing those billion proteins where to go and what to do. And the evolutionary science has no idea how to construct such a program, no mechanism at all. Creationists have always understood that the vast order and design in the world point toward a designer. The universe is teleological, that is, it exhibits design and order and purpose. Intelligent design calls for an intelligent designer. Teleology, design, intelligence is something fundamental in the world and that we can know it. And so the sort of science that has been done for the last 300 years that's, that's tried systematically to exclude intelligence is, is coming up short. It doesn't work. It's scientifically sterile. It's not giving the answers that, uh, that we need to try to understand uh, the phenomenon, phenomena that we're encountering. The more scientists study the universe, the more they discover design. The discovery of DNA in 1953 by James Watson and Francis Crick makes it less and less likely that such a complex system could have evolved by chance. DNA contains the genetic information code and is a crucial part of all living matter. Yet evolutionary theory is powerless to explain how it came into existence. The discovery of DNA was a big blow to materialism. And that hasn't been assimilated yet by the scientific community. But uh, information is an irreducible component of living things. DNA was the great discovery that at the core of living things is a message, a code. Everywhere where information begins, it has a mind behind it. We know that information is communicated by minds, and guess what? That is the basis of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, I don't think there is life in outer space, but scientists are right to say that if they got a message with information from outer space, that would signal a mind behind it. Well, there is information in DNA. 
Now, if there's information in DNA, the best thing to draw from that is that there's a mind behind DNA, and that would be a supreme being. Over a hundred years after Darwin's theory was made public, the evidence continues to point toward creation instead of evolution.